Well, good morning. Top, we are ready for a press conference right now, beginning with Luzerne County EMA Director Steve Bakanich and the three commissioners. We'll take this conference right now as, as we get going. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here with uh, Commissioner Tom Cooney, Mary Ann Petrella, Jim Brazina, our Executive Director of the Luzerne County Flood Protection Authority, and Steve Bakanovich, our EMA Director. As you know, we've been monitoring the river all night long. Right now, the current river levels are, are expected to crest at 5 a.m. on Friday morning at about 39.6 feet. There's a 30 percent chance that the river will go higher than that. Uh, right now, we're confident that the levees will hold. However, we're going to order a mandatory evacuation of all the areas that were affected by the Agnes flood in 1972. Again, we want to order a mandatory evacuation of the areas affected by the Agnes flood in 1972. We're going to ask that everyone leave the area by 8 o'clock or 8 p.m. this evening and get out of the area. Uh, we're hoping that people who live in the valley floor will stay with relatives and, and family at this point in time. We don't expect the river to go back down until Sunday morning below 30 feet. So this is going to be an extended evacuation for about three days at this point in time. I'm going to turn over this to Steve and Jim Brazina for details. Uh, Jim? Sure. Uh, as Steve said. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Um, uh, as you know, we're uh, now looking at a, a crest of nearly 40 feet. Uh, it will be the second largest uh, height on the Susquehanna River in our recorded uh, records that we have. Uh, we have worked all night with uh, our incident management team to start to prepare the necessary information that we need uh, for an orderly evacuation. As Steve said, uh, we do not anticipate any problems with the levee system. Uh, 40 feet is within the uh, design of the facility. However, again, there is still uncertainty in what that forecast is going to be. Uh, we will be having a briefing later this morning that will detail the traffic control points that we will have and uh, evacuation routes because we have some roads uh, out of the area that have been impacted by flash flooding so that uh, you don't end up on a road that doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we will be announcing the locations of all of the evacuation shelters. Uh, right now, there are three open at the Pittston Area High School, the Luzerne County Community College, and the State Street School in Larksville. Uh, we are looking to open two additional facilities, and all of those facilities uh, have the ability to uh, accept pets, but uh, make sure that you bring in from, uh, food and uh, things to take care of them. We're working with the uh, mass care facilities uh, to take care of uh, having them moved out of the area. Uh, and uh, Steve will talk about our rumor control number if you have specific questions uh, regarding that. And uh, I think that that's pretty much everything that I have from my side, and I think Steve can fill in the blanks at this point. Thanks, Jim. Um, Again, uh, to emphasize, uh, folks, we, we are doing this with the safety of the citizens of the, of the county in mind. We want to ensure that folks have ample opportunity uh, to get out of the area uh, that, that will be impacted or could, has the potential to be impacted by uh, uh, this near record flooding situation that is affecting our area. Some of the things that we want to uh, emphasize when you're leaving, there's a few items that uh, we strongly suggest that you bring with you, uh, whether you're going to a, a friend or a relative's house or to an emergency shelter. Some of those are uh, bring some uh, water for yourself or your family. Uh, it's suggested one gallon of water per person per day, uh, some uh, non-perishable foods, uh, any changes of clothing, uh, any uh, first aid kits, and especially any prescription medication that you may be on. Uh, we will not be able to, uh, at this point, provide any additional medication. So if you're on medications, we want to ensure that you have those with you. Uh, bring copies of any important documents, uh, insurance information, uh, you know, uh, your driver's license, some type of identification with you. Uh, you're not going to, uh, at, at this point, um, 
be able to get in many places without proper identification once the situation uh, starts to return uh, back to normal. Uh, bring, you know, moist towelettes, things for, uh, you know, hygiene, um, you know, things of that nature. Uh, also, uh, some of the other things that if, if you can't take them with you, we want to strongly suggest that you move these items to uh, a higher level in your home. Uh, any priceless family photos, any family heirlooms, uh, extra car keys or house keys. Uh, also, an inventory of any uh, valuable household items that you may have. Uh, you know, in the event that things uh, progress and, and become extremely uh, damaging, we want to ensure that you have a list of what was in the house prior to the event. Uh, it will help not only with getting you back uh, to normal, um, it'll help with any uh, insurance claims that may occur. So we want to make sure that you have that type of documentation. Um, we, we do want to emphasize uh, there is time. We want to make sure that everyone is out by uh, 8 p.m. this evening. Uh, we want to ensure that folks do this orderly, safely, and uh, take into account your, your neighbors and your friends. If there's somebody that's nearby that you know uh, may have trouble getting out or may have an issue uh, or need some assistance in getting out, go and check on them. Uh, if you uh, know of somebody that may be homebound or uh, have any type of medical needs, reach out to your local municipality, make sure they're aware of that. Uh, they can help those folks. And uh, then uh, the municipalities can also reach out to the county and we'll provide additional resources uh, such as additional ambulances or buses should that be necessary. So look out for your neighbors, look out for your family, be safe. Uh, we want to ensure that everyone is taken care of at this point, um, and that's basically all I have at this point. So you talk about the areas affected by the Agnes flood. Could you run down what some of those communities are so that people can hear actually where they should be? Really, at, at this point, those, those municipalities that border the Susquehanna River, um, you know, those not only not protected by the levee system, but those that are also protected by the levee system, uh, we're going to be providing some uh, information for the, the media that you'll be able to run some computer graphics as to those areas that were affected by Agnes. Uh, we'll be able to get that to you. So if folks that are maybe new to the area may not be familiar with the Agnes storm and what areas were affected, we'll at least have an idea on whether or not they fall into that range so that information we'll be able to provide to you in the very near future. How many residents are we looking at, would you say? Uh, at this point, we're estimating, Jim, approximately 65,000 people. That's correct. In addition to those from last night? In addition to those from last night, that is correct. Jim, the Commissioner Urban expressed confidence in the levees. Is there a concern that the levees may have settled or sunk a little bit since they were constructed a few years ago? No, uh, one of the things that we do is uh, as part of our maintenance operations, we do surveys of the levees. Uh, so uh, we're assured that they are the proper height that they were uh, originally constructed to. And that is live coverage right now of this news conference in Wilkesboro, where you're hearing right now the mandatory evacuation of the Wyoming Valley. You want to thank Jim Murdoch there. He was live. They're saying that they're confident many of the levees will hold, but they're telling people that live in that historic 72 flood area. Those people in Kingston, 44, to Edwardsville, Pittston, Wyoming, West Pittston, Hanover, Wilkesbury Plains, uh, Nanticoke, those people that were flooded back in 72, those are the people that you have to move out by 8 p.m. tonight. 8 p.m. tonight, and they say there are shelters set up. One of them is at State Street School in Larksville, one at LCCC in Nanako for people to go. They say bring water, bring a change of clothing, first aid kit, especially prescription drugs with you just in case things happen. And this could last for three days. It they could say. last. could last for a long time. And as we know, and we'll talk to Joe about this, Talking about 39.6 as far as the water in Wilkesbury, the levees protect up to 41 feet, but we're getting awfully close there, Joe. And also, when you think about that, since 1972 with the Agnes flooding, the highest it's gone is, I think, about 36 feet. So, so we're already above, we're going to be above We're it. going to be above yeah. that. So it's been since 72. This is a unique day for sure. Let me show you this, folks. It's the reason for all of this uh, flooding and rain. It's because of one and two and thus three results from it. So go to the map and I'll show you what I mean. That big upper level low still spinning to the west. If you're saying, hey, you showed that yesterday, that's kind of my point. 
nothing has changed, nothing has moved. So weather, which normally swings in a west to east fashion, is kind of in halt. One good thing is, number one, is slowly starting to break down and retrograde to the west. Number two is Hurricane Katia. And in between, that plume of moisture, that's how it looked yesterday, last night, and into this morning. I feel kind of freaky, but here's that plume of moisture. <laughs> A plume of moisture cutting through the viewing area right now. This is moving to the east. There's another one starting to form here just south of Harrisburg. My fear is that that lifts north and is going to rain on the area that's already saturated with over eight, nine inches of rain over the last two days. This is what I'm talking about. So should this spill north, we're going to have additional rainfall, but it should be under an inch for much of the area through the next 12 hours, and then it's going to taper off by this afternoon and evening. And this is what has merged with it over western New York and into the Catskills. So much of the area, it's just shot rain now and lightning strikes. We've had some thunder in the last few hours. There's that one plume to the south, which may lift back up and affect some areas. But look at these rainfall totals. That briefing that you just got and river level projections all have input from data like this that I'm sharing with you. 8.71 inches in Binghamton, 6.13. That's 24 hour rainfall. Just to give you a reminder, that's about a season of rain two, three months of rain fell in one day upstream on the Susquehanna. These are the flood warning areas, flash flooding in maroon, brown color. Lackawanna County, Carbon County is pretty much the only areas where there's not too much going on because of gaps in the rain yesterday. The Lackawanna River looking good, as is the Delaware. Elsewhere, flooding. 60s, highs today will be in the 70s. Much of the morning still characterized by these narrow bands of showers and thunderstorms. Hit and miss, if you're in them, you could see a half an inch to an inch of rain. It should taper off this afternoon. We're at the beginning of the end. But again, uh, Mindy and Tom, a month uh, or two or three months of rain in just 24 hours upstream on the Susquehanna River. That's the cause of all of this. Unprecedented in my career here and if you go back 30, 40, 50 years. <laughs> so it's the late 50s at least. All right. Yeah. All right, Milo, if people uh, want to still uh, continue to watch that news conference uh, from Wilkes-Barre where we've, they've ordered the mandatory evacuation of the Wyoming Valley, you can still see it, I believe, on 16-2. Also, a place being hard hit, central Pennsylvania. Many have been told to leave their homes. Water still on the streets there of Lycoming County. News 16's Ryan Lucky live in Montoursville right now where the sun is up and we can see the high water. Ryan, good morning. You said it. Good morning, Tom and Mindy. New developments this half hour. According to the National Re Weather Service, the Loyal Sock Creek, which spilled over its banks, causing this huge mess along the 200 block of Broad Street in Montoursville, has just hit a record level. According to the National Weather Service, the last record set was at 17.9 feet. This morning at 6 a.m., new measurements show it's more than 20 feet high. And of course, we've been using this fire hydrant here to kind of gauge how high the water has gotten. You can see a little snippet of yellow on it. When we first arrived, there was about four inches of yellow before the green top. Now it's basically covered. There was a evacuation that took place overnight here in Montoursville, along with other parts of Lycoming County, which include Muncie and the Hughesville area. Muncie Creek actually spilling over its banks, flooding into many streets. A shelter has been set up at the Hughesville High School. North of us right now, north of uh, Williamsport, I should say, in the Trout Run area, Bittner's Trailer Park, according to uh, county leaders, they told us about 80 homes were just evacuated. Their waters are flooding that mobile home park. And we wanted to show you just some scenes on some major roadways this morning, including here in Lycoming County. This is 180 near the 405 interchange. We found a vehicle sort of rear-ended. A number of exits are shut down in this area of 180, the 405 interchange. This is near Muncie Hospital. I also just talked to PennDOT moments ago who told us that in the central Pennsylvania area, Columbia County, Interstate 80 between the Buckhorn and Bloomsburg exits, both directions shut down. There are apparently some detours in place, but if you travel Interstate 80 between the Bloomsburg Buckhorn exits, avoid it because both directions are shut down at this hour. Now, I want to show you some live pictures if we can cut back here because this debris seems to be floating up uh, toward us. And behind me is where the Loyal Sock Creek is. If you can really take a look down there, the street signs are basically covered. We had some people who somehow managed to spot that there's a car wash apparently toward the end of this street, the 200 block of Broad Street in Montoursville. It is almost covered. They told us the water down there is about eight to nine feet, not inches. We're talking feet. And so many folks and neighbors living in this area, yes, they made it out of their home 
problems. We talked to them at a drier intersection and they said they have not seen a site like this that you're seeing today since Hurricane Agnes of 72. So of course a lot of people are keeping an eye on things. Shelters are in place and we're just keeping watch because guys the rain is still going on. We're still having some drizzling effects as you can see, um, but it just seems like it just keeps climbing. And again, a record level set according to the National Weather Service crested at about 20 feet. The Loyal Sock Creek that is last record eons ago was about 17.9. Back to you. Yeah, lots of problems out there in central Pennsylvania. We know Muncie Creek is over its banks. Montoursville parts of that evacuated problems in Watson Town. So be careful out there in central Pennsylvania. And as Ryan mentioned, Columbia County, just a mess. Mindy. That's right. Columbia County, they're telling EMA, telling people just don't leave your homes. There's so many roads closed there. It's a mess. Also, we want to mention Interstate 81 southbound closed at exit 124 in Frackville. So everywhere you go, there are problems on the roads. Yeah, and also uh, the state office building uh, closed today in Scranton be, uh, because of the threat of uh, some water there. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back with full weather with Joe. He's going to talk about your river levels, which, are, of course, we're talking about historic highs today, not only on the creeks and streams, but also on the rivers, talking about Agnes-type numbers at Wilkesbury as far as the Susquehanna River goes. And even worse in some places. We'll be right back. Yeah.